Is this thing on? Welcome back to Big Mouth and fancy seeing you here in June. I'm very welcome my friends and especially my enemies. Come in, sit down, no touching. I don't do the touching. Are you feeling charitable? Then smash the subscribe button and the like button and please do follow me on Twitter at Movies TV Man and welcome to Saturday's edition. Yes, Saturday's edition. That was quick, wasn't it? Of the DCEU Daily and DC Fandom is bigger than we ever imagined. In fact, DC Fandom is bigger than I ever imagined. I mean, wow, yesterday the hype train really got into overdrive, didn't it? When they launched all the names of the people that are going to be attending. And then at the end, they made sure they told us, and many more. Why is that vital? Because Henry Cavill and Ben Affleck are not on that list. But interestingly, Paramount have announced that Ben Affleck will be writing and directing a brand new movie for them. I'm starting to think that Ben maybe has moved on from Batfleck, which is really sad. And by the way, I don't want this to be true. I love Ben as Batman. I loved him in BVS. I can't wait to see his real performance in Zack Snyder's Justice League. But it is looking like he has moved on from Batman. And the statement he made a couple of months ago where he said he moved on from Batman... Is probably still the case, which is a shame. I hope this is not true. But when you hear project uh, amongst projects being announced constantly, you do start to wonder. But who knows? We may get a massive surprise from Ben Affleck at DC Fandom. We shall see. I hope so. I really do. I hope he does get his straight to streaming Batman series. But, you know, he's got a lot of um, fingers in a lot of pies right now. So that will be very interesting. Now, what's more realistic for a big surprise at DC Fandom is Henry Cavill. Now, Cavill and Affleck were both affected badly by Justice League. Ever since that day, there's been rumours upon rumours about Henry not being Superman anymore. And of course, even Ben Affleck himself, you know, said publicly he's not Batman anymore. So who knows? Nobody knows about Ben Affleck. But Henry Cavill, I think is more viable to come back than Ben Affleck. But nobody, again, nobody has a bloody clue. But his name is not on there. He has not been announced for DC fandom. Listen, everybody and their brother, mother and sister at, is at this event. Do you really think Henry Cavill, the last person to play Superman, is not going to be at DC fandom? Of course. And in fact, Ben Affleck, even if he's not going to make any movies should be there as well, just to talk about his experiences of playing Batman. But again, we shall see. Their names are not listed. But the people's names that are listed are Ezra Miller and Andrus Machete. Andrus Machete, the director of the Flashpoint movie, and of course, our brilliant, illustrious Flash himself, Ezra Miller, who fought for this movie, you know, hammer and tong to make sure it had the right tone. He won, and they brought in Andy Machete, which is very exciting. They are going to be there for this movie. Now, interesting, the young lady who played Iris in um, Zack Snyder's Justice League doesn't seem to... Is her name on there? I can't remember. I'm going to have to have a look. Have a look for me because, you know, it's in small... There's all these names and, I mean, who's, who can sit there going, yeah, that one's there, that one's there. I've tried. I've really tried. But there's a lot of names there. And another aspect is it is that you just want to be surprised as well. But I, don't get me wrong, I'm loving the marketing. As I say every day, AT&T have taken Warner Brothers to another level. But more importantly for DC fans, we never thought they would do this. You know, Comic, Comic Con at home is an interesting concept because they didn't market it. It was like it was a token gesture and it was a right flop. And you can understand why uh, Marvel didn't really want to be there or DC didn't want to be there. And DC to have this fandom, for AT&T to come up with the DC fandom, it just shows you what clever, talented people they've got working for them. Because at the old regime, when it was Time Warner, Time Warner just used to allow Warner Brothers Pictures and DC to do whatever they wanted. That's not the case now. I'm already hearing that more people are being moved out of Warner Media and more people will have to report to CEO and Sarnoff. This is another massive decision, and I expect even more heads to roll as they change the face of this company for the better. 
because I am a Warner Brothers stan and the future of this company is very important. And we can't allow plastic companies that offer you very little in a variety of storytelling filmmaking like Warner Brothers. You know, this is what we've got. Do you want Disney to be the future or do you want Warner Brothers to be the future, which wants to make a variety of content, not just superheroes? It's very, very important. And I think AT&T, what they're doing at Warner Media, the newly formed Warner Media, is something extremely special. And for me, fandom, I mean, wow, what an event. In a year of a pandemic, it's been a terrible year for every single man, woman and child out there and whatever other gender you are. You know, so it's it's really important when we have exciting things to focus our minds, whatever you enjoy, you know, a cooking class, uh, how to make scotch and bourbon on the rocks. I don't know. Right. But for people like us, for people like you who have made the effort to subscribe to my channel and watch this channel, it's so exciting to be able to have this. I don't know. Are they are they having a Krypton panel there? Um, I'm not sure. I, I'm going to have to look at that again. Check that out as, and let me know as well. As I say, this DC fandom is so big. You'd be there all day trying to work out, oh, where are these panels going to be? How are they going to do this? It has kind of been explained. Um, it Look, it's a massive event and I'm sure it's, it's all going to be a detailed because it's so big. Luckily for them, it's, it's all on the internet. So it's all going to be choreographed in, a, in the right way, if you like. But as I say, I never dreamed any company would be able to do this. And you can understand. I don't know what Fag and the Marvel Studios are planning. It would have to be bigger than this. And at the end of the day, it seems to me already that AT&T and the newly formed Warner Media are you know, leaps ahead of anything Fagan and Marvel Studios can now think of. They are now looking like a very old-fashioned group of people over at Marvel Studios because AT&T have got their fingers at the pulse. And it's strange, isn't it? Ever since they announced Zack Snyder's Justice League, they've gone from strength to strength. It's like they planned it all. That was the big coup de grace that they were going to announce. And it's going to go on and on and on. And, of course, we'll see from DC Fandom what announcements that brings as well. But, I mean, I don't know one DC fan who's saying, mm, DC Fandom, so what? Of course they're not. Because before AT&T, we had no hope. We didn't. We had no hope for nothing. We didn't know what was going to happen. The old regime certainly weren't going to release a Superman movie. All of a sudden, AT&T have done a deal to bring J.J. Abrams in. He's most probably going to write and direct the Superman movie. That's great. And we all, are, all, all Superman fans are focused with the future and what's going to happen with Henry Cavill. We know Tyler Hecklin is doing his Superman and Lois TV show. That excites me as well, because working on that are the people who did Flash season one. That's when Flash was actually good. So I'm excited for that. It's going to be a very interesting concept, very different to what we've seen before. So as I say, a really exciting time to be a DC fan. And, you know, whoever you can think of about being at DC Fandom is going to be there. People like Sam Liu, the animation director. Everyone's going to be there. It's going to be an amazing event. And for me, as a DC fan, as someone who wears my Superman insignia with pride, I don't just wear this because I'm doing a DC video. I wear this because as Lois Lane says to Superman in Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice, this means something. This means everything to so many people. And you never tarnish this. You never tarnish this. And you wear this with pride. Because this is DC. This is how DC started. And at the fandom, Superman is going to be front and center. Of course, along with all the other brilliant DC characters I know and love too. I am so, I'm just so delighted we are now owned by a company, by an entity that gets it, gets what the fans want. But bloody hell, I nearly forgot. Yes, we're going to talk about that Suicide Squad Rock steady game, of course we are. Oh yes, the target has been locked because look at this. Rock steady are teasing a Suicide Squad game. Brilliant, 
Brilliant. Now, as you can see here, the target is locked. This is Superman, by the way, which I didn't notice at first till other people kind of brought it up and I noticed it as well. So the target is locked at Superman's head. So the squad are out to... The rumour is it's um, a Suicide Squad kill the Justice League video game, which would be amazing. Because what's amazing about that concept is that you involve the Justice League. And I said many years ago that I wanted to see a Suicide Squad versus Justice League live action picture with with the team that David Ayer set up and, of course, the team that Zack Snyder set up. And that may happen one day and that will be exciting. But this is great. And again, Superman, even in a, even for a tease for a Superman game, I'm sorry, for a Suicide Squad game, Superman is front and centre. What does that tell you? The AT&T understand what this means. It's amazing. It's fantastic. And you still, do you still really think that AT&T want to sell WB games? Don't be so bloody daft. Of course they don't. So again, official, Rocksteady are teasing this target locked. More details at DC Fandom. So again, some another reason to look forward to DC Fandom for wow, a Suicide Squad game with Superman as the major tease. As I say, Superman front and center. It really is amazing to love this character and to love DC. It's awesome. And finally, there was a little Twitter event begging AT&T and HBO Max to make sure they do title Zack Snyder's Justice League as, as Zack Snyder's Justice League. Now, sometimes within this fandom, I get very, 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 very damn confused because I was under the impression that it is called Zack Snyder's Justice League, that it's always been called a Zack Snyder's Justice League since the official launch announcement, right? And it will always be called Zack Snyder's Justice League. So quite frankly, everyone, and even Ray Fisher posted about this, I'm confused. I don't know what you're talking about because I retweeted you all, but it's weird because I was under the impression that it is called Zack Snyder's Justice League. That is the official title. So I really don't understand what you people are talking about. Maybe someone can clarify this in the comments below. So I was a bit perplexed about all these tweets. Are they just tweets to kind of, because they wanted to do an event? I don't know. But as far as I know, and I haven't seen any evidence on the contrary to say that HBO Max are planning not to call it Zack Snyder's Justice League. Listen, it's called Zack Snyder's Justice League. It's always going to be called Zack Snyder's Justice League. But anyway, comments down below about that, about everything we've discussed today. As you can see, I'm really, really hyped for DC Fandom. Now, I want to apologise to every single subscriber because of the lack of quality of my channel. I don't have the support to live stream at DC Fandom. This is a 24-hour event. They are not going to repeat this the next day. I would have loved to have streamed live, but I've got a plan. With me, right, when there's an obstacle in my way, I've always got a solution. So this is what we are going to do. We are going to do little bite-sized videos all throughout August the 22nd. Whatever thing drops, whatever fandom subject I want to talk about, I will drop a 30-second, one-minute, two-minute video. And there's going to be plenty of them going throughout the day. That might even be even more fun than staying alive because there's always going to be dead air. And obviously, 24 hours, I would need help. But if I was to get over a 1,000 subscribers, I would definitely go live and we could do this together because it's such a great event and I am very sad about that. But what I may do, and listen out for this, I may have another plan as well as to doing the bite-sized videos because I want to do, I want to be big for DC Fandom, the biggest event in the history of this fandom, right? So I have got Instagram, so I could go live on Instagram. I can also go live on TikTok and I'll give you the details of those accounts as we get closer to the 22nd. So keep in mind, Follow me on Twitter, at Movies TV Mad, and I'll definitely let you know on one of the DCEU dailies I do about my plans, about what I will be doing on DC Fandom Day, August the 22nd, how I'll be covering the event. But at the moment, because I can't go live on YouTube, I do have the options of Instagram 
and TikTok. And even Twitter, I can go live on Twitter as well if I want. So we'll decide, but I am definitely going to mark the occasion. You will have all the coverage you need from me here at Big Mouth. Comment down below, like, share and subscribe. And I'll be back tomorrow with even more DCEU Daily. Stay strong, stay pumped, because DC Fandom is the event that's going to make the other fandoms so jealous. See you again soon, tomorrow.